This is Karen Ramsey, and I'm here with my friend and colleague, um, health educator, inventor, scientist, engineer, Ken Rolla. And today I hosted Ken for a very informative um, and extremely exciting workshop on what we do with the upcoming 5G radiation. Uh, many people are starting to talk about this and what it's going to do to us as a population. How are our bodies going to respond to what we think is going to be intensified radiation even more than we already have with our cell phones and our laptops and computers. And so I would like to ask you, Ken, um, what is actually happening with the 5G? Like, where are we with that right now? What can we expect in 2019? And can you give us a few pointers that what we can do to actually protect ourselves and our families mm -hmm. from all of this bombardment of radiation? Sure. Uh, and first of all, for those who are not familiar, 5G wireless technology is the next generation or fifth generation of cellular technology not just for cell phones, but also for the, what's being called the Internet of Things, which is basically having appliances, and I mean just about every appliance in your house, uh, and uh, in the environment, outdoors, and businesses, and the military, communications, all kinds of different devices being connected to the Internet and feeding data to the Internet. And so, for example, they're already on the market. You have smart refrigerators. Of course, we know about smart TVs that are connected to the internet, but also like smart refrigerators that have computers built into them that um, are being promoted as like an information hub for your family where you can have all your social media and your emails and everything in one place in the kitchen where you can go and access things and it also, you know, your, your fridge can have cameras inside. That's um, amazing. That, yeah, feed data through the internet to your cell phone when you're out at the grocery store to tell you what's in your fridge and or you can look in your fridge and see what's in there. Uh, those kinds of things, even toasters, you know, even little appliances you wouldn't imagine, like toothbrushes. There's actually on the market right now a wireless toothbrush, an electric toothbrush, and when you use it through Wi-Fi, it will actually take a 3D map of your mouth, create a 3D image of it, and then send that to your dentist or, who, or whoever uh, so that your dentist can see your dental records. Now, <clears throat> of course, that could be abused, but... Um, um, you know, a lot of people will buy into this thinking it's a great convenience, but also the capabilities for surveillance are unparalleled in human history. And with all of these smart appliances in every nook and cranny of houses and businesses and outdoors, there's going to be an incredible amount of data available to people for surveillance or law enforcement or, you know, espionage and spying, whatever. Um, so that's, privacy is one big issue with this stuff, but uh, the major issue for our health though is that these, because 5G wireless technology is using what's known as millimeter wave uh, frequencies, it's a very, very small wavelength, and when you have a small wavelength, it's lower power than, you know, previous generations of cellular technology, and so instead of having these big cell phone towers sitting out somewhere broadcasting for miles around, you've got to have little small broadcasting tr transmitters about every 500 or 600 uh, yards. And so that means there's going to be millions of these little antennas placed all over, um, everywhere. Um, They're going to be smaller than the cell towers we have now. Are those being taken down? They Are will they... They will be eventually, but not for a long, quite a long time because as with all technology changes, you've got to have a migration path over time. So, you know, people are still using 2G wireless cell phones in some cases. And so f the previous versions of wireless will still be around for a while. So we, you won't be seeing cell towers and stuff going away anytime real soon. Uh, and but we're just going to be seeing more devices, right, but shorter devices. Right. You'll see many, many more uh, internet ready devices. And then you'll see a lot more uh, little tiny towers, or, or not even towers, um, antennas, but they're being disguised so that you won't even know that they're there. Um, they're being hidden as mailboxes and flagpoles, and they're hidden sometimes in church steeples. 
Um, even in Arizona, they've got these antennas that look like cacti or trees. Or, um, they can look like a light pole, just a regular you know, light fixture. So they're being embedded in all these different um, form factors so that um, so they won't be obvious, and I guess also so they won't be an eyesore. But uh, this is already happening. Uh, you know, 5G is being rolled out, it's starting to be mm -hmm. rolled out. Certain it's markets are having a lot of this stuff put in place. Wow. And nobody really knows what the, the full effects are going to be on health, but we already know from thousands of scientific studies the negative effects that electromagnetic radiation has on the body. And uh, particularly, for example, the Bioinitiative Report is one, it's an amalgamation of 1,800 different studies. 26 scientists, uh, highly credentialed scientists from around the world got together and compiled all of this data on the effects of electromagnetic radiation. Uh, and these are all peer-reviewed, you know, journaled uh, studies that have been done. There's lots and lots of data. We know what electromagnetic radiation does to the body, how it interferes with cellular communication, it accelerates brainwave states. Uh, in cases like with cell phones right up next to the head, it can heat tissue and water in the, in the body, on and on and on. Sleep. Definitely sleep. sleep. Definitely sleep because, uh, and I see tons of people with sleep problems and they don't realize their cell phone is causing the problem because the brain and the nervous system and the cells in the body are designed to entrain with pulsing. They're designed to entrain with the pulsing in the Earth's atmosphere called the Schumann resonance. And the Schumann resonance is about a 7.83. There's actually a, a, a several different frequencies, but they're all in the range of around uh, 5 to 15 cycles per second. Uh, and we're naturally designed to entrain with that. And what that does is slows us down, relaxes us, gets us into deep sleep states at night, and allows us to get into the deepest brainwave states at night. When you're operating around things like Wi-Fi and cell phones and you're putting them right up next to your head, the body and the brain try to entrain with those cycles. And those devices are operating at billions of cycles per second. Instead of, you know, 5 to 15 cycles, it's billions of cycles per second. And the brain and the nervous system and the body and the cells try to entrain with that and it fries them. It just frazzles them. And it accelerates brainwave states. And then when you go to bed at night, your, your brain won't slow down and get into the deeper brainwave states of delta, theta, and gamma. And so it's causing a lot of those kinds of problems. But, and of course, we know about you know, other studies showing, I mean, this has even been admitted now by mainstream science and the medical system that cell phones have been proven to cause brain cancer. So A whole host of problems. Right. Now, these 5G towers are not going to be so strong as these large 4G towers. Uh, because of the millimeter wave technology, it's higher frequency, but it's lower power. And that, so they've got to place them you know, much more closer together, which means it's going to be all over the place, but it also means that the signals are not going to be as strong as if you were right next to a 4G tower. However, it's still going to create these problems, and nobody really knows what the net effect is going to be yet, but it doesn't look good. And it sounds like there's going to be a lot more of them, so we cannot even really predict where they're going to be or how close they're going to be to us. Exactly, right? exactly. They've got to be within 500, 600 yards of each other. So they're going to be everywhere. Oh my goodness. If, if they're fully implemented, and that's the, a big if, because there's a lot of backlash coming out about this. There are cities and towns, municipalities that are suing cell phone companies. Uh, the, the federal government and state governments are trying to stop that. But there's a lot of opposition to it. Um, but that's one of the things that you can do is find out if your municipalities and your local leaders especially know about this issue and educate them on the facts and the science of it. Not on some, some guy's you know, YouTube video sitting in his living room, but get the hard science on it and present it to these people and let them understand that these are issues. Uh, sometimes schools will, uh, school officials will pay attention to this, but usually, in my experience, they don't. Public officials may or may not, but you, you've, we've got to act, be activists and get out and talk about this and raise these issues and not just lay down and accept it, number one. And then in the meantime, my philosophy has always been, I'm not going to wait for legislation or whatever policy to change before I do something about it. I want something now to solve this problem. So I wound up developing these devices uh, that utilize the subtle energy that scientists uh, are calling skater waves or skater fields. And you can put these devices around your home and around your properties, and you can even get portable devices that you carry with you 
that will put out a skater field, and that energy field will structure this electromagnetic radiation that's bouncing around all over the place from these towers, and it's kind of bouncing around randomly and chaotically, and it passes through the body and it interferes with cellular communication. Uh, so, when, but when it hits the skater field that you're in from one of my devices or devices like that, all of those random chaotic waves coming from all these different locations, they all become parallel to each other. And that's known as quantum coherence. And when they come parallel to each other, when they're passing through the body, they're much quieter. So they interfere with cellular communication much less. Now, this is not a panacea. And, you know, that you think you can just get immersed in all this stuff and, and it, you know, you're going to be okay. No, that's not the case. But until we can get this stuff stopped or changed or have the technology changed, because we could be using frequencies and types of energies that are actually healing to the body instead of damaging. But until that point, you know, you want to have all the protection you can, which means devices around your home, like these skater devices, wearing devices like pendants or, or power devices that you can carry with you, um, minimizing the use, not buying into the Internet of Things, because this, this 5G wireless technology is not just about cell phones. It's about implementing the Internet of Things with all these different devices that can, you know, <clears throat> provide a lot of convenience, but they can also do a lot of spying and send a lot of data to a lot of people that want to know about you. Not you just have from, to think about your purchases. Exactly. It's a major privacy issue. It's not, uh, it's not just marketing either. You know, there's typically governments and people in power like that, when they, when they, when they get power, eventually it becomes abused. And so, so this is a very much a privacy issue. Um, but you can wear devices on yourself, you can put them around your home, in your office, wherever you work. Uh, when you travel, you can carry portable devices with you, pendants, uh, and that will help protect you. Uh, and in, with my devices, I know because I test them and we, we measure the biological reaction in people. And it it's works. the scalar energy right. that comes from energy. the device right. that provides that protection right. from the electromagnetic fields. Right, right. But you can think of it kind of like noise-canceling headphones. It's not a panacea. You know, you can wear, you can be in a noisy room and put on noise-canceling headphones and it sounds quiet, but it's not the same thing as being in a quiet room. And so that's kind of how it is with these devices. They will structure this energy, this electromagnetic energy, and reduce it radically, the, the damage from it radically, and improve it radically. But it's not the same as not having that energy there in the first place. Right. Uh, so, so anyway, there are solutions. I talk a lot about this. I've got YouTube videos about this, and I've got a blog where I talk about all this stuff and these solutions. That's what my job is. I find solutions for these things as immediately as possible, and then let people know about them so they can protect themselves. But we've also got to lobby and and be activists against this technology because we could be using skater energy technology for example that would enable cellular phones or even the internet of things in a way that's not damaging to us and that could even heal us if the proper frequencies are being used and so we've got to start understanding those options and then lobbying our so-called leaders for this excellent we all need to do that and realize how monumental this could be as an impact on our health mm -hmm. um, and so Ken's website is freshandalive.com and you can find out about his devices there um, my website Karen Ramsey is superhealthychildren.com and uh, we look forward to seeing you on those websites and join us again um, I hope you'll like this video. I think you got some great information and you can certainly comment below and subscribe. Um, thank you. Nice having you with us. Thank you. Thank you, Ken. Thank you.